hi guys welcome and uh, welcome back to my channel my name is cassandra if you're new here don't forget to like comment and subscribe to my channel today's video will be a in-depth look at me in the office as a medical biller i want to share this with you because i get a lot of comments and questions about this career field or this field as it is so I want to sit down and give you an in-depth look at my day-to-day -day in the office, which obviously every day is going to be a little different, but this is more my typical day as of right now for the new year. So I will let you guys in on a little secrets and the little things that you guys have been asking for. So to start off my morning, I always wipe down my desk. This was a Tuesday, I believe. Um, this is my first time in the office since the previous Thursday. I do not work in the office on Fridays or Mondays. So Thursday is typically my last day. And here, um, I'm just wiping down everything because I don't know who's been on my desk, what's been going on at my desk, and they do not clean our office anymore. So I just want to wipe it down, get everything clean and ready for the upcoming day. And then um, after that, you're going to see I step out. I'm going to go to the bathroom, wash my hands, get some coffee, and then I'll come back with you guys. I don't think we got enough time to sort out all the fights. Yeah. Sort out all the lies, oh baby, yeah There was a part of me that knew that And still I'm caught by surprise I thought you'd always be mine Oh yeah. I guess our dreams fell asleep There's no passion in the comatose Baby going down, 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 down Baby going down, 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 down After changing my shoes from the previous clip I am a big procrastinator and typically I wait till I'm in the office to go ahead and do my productivity sheet from the day before. So this day I was doing Monday, I was running, I ran a report and I was working from that report. So that's what I'm copying my numbers for. If you're new here, this is the sheet that track each account you have touched for the day. So if management wants to go back and look, they are able to pull the sheet and find that information. You guys, a more in depth look at my day to day because that video, this video is an in depth look. So, obviously, you see what I do in the beginning my productivity sheet, my mail. Okay, so starting off with the mail aspect of everything, when I'm doing my mail, it is we work from two different systems. So we have the system that like the doctors and the hospital staff use. And then we have the system that the admin staff use. So I'm the person that, okay, if it's denied, that's when the admin really care to want to know why is it denied and we work it that way. The admin system is just tracking denials making sure everything is done uploading everything in the system so so for that aspect of it the other system when i get the mail i'm uploading it i scan it into the other system so that um it could be found in one place if i need it again and then I note it in the hospital staff so the hospital staff will know that this claim is now denied and or like let's say the insurance was not active but the patient didn't say anything and the patient came back they'll see that I ran the eligibility the patient no longer have the insurance so do not take that insurance card the patient needs to 
patients to give accurate insurance or they'll be self-paid plain and simple with that so I have some notes here that I wrote down so with the admin staff uh, with the admin side of the billing I um, I entered the denial put the denial reason it could be an administrative denial such as not medically necessary um no that's not admin admin side denial is when you get no auth mismatch date of birth the gender is wrong they're not able to find the patient that's an admin denial then you have a clinical denial which is not medically necessary they need the charts stuff like that that's a or the coding is incorrect that's a clinical denial so those I specifically say what is denied for I will either say I will be appealing it or I sent the chart I requested the whole complete chart we have an outside company that does that we don't do it in-house because it's like really some patients chart is really thick we send like your whole medical records we don't just send clinicals for that day we will send the whole thing so that's the outside company that does that um so i will put in a request for it and have it sent out or if it's something that needs a higher level of court appeals they have a different team that will also do that for us And one thing I would definitely say is the major thing when you're doing billing or coding, if you did not know the account, you didn't do it. That's like a major. You don't put the account, you did it, you didn't do it. That's that. Okay, another thing is I'm gonna be getting some stuff done while I'm in. So sometimes you will get like I I'll appeal something and then I will get back um, them saying that my appeal was upheld and it needs to be taken to the second level. That's a whole different department. That's a department that if it needs higher um higher steps then they do that I don't do that part of it so that's them I will send it to them for them to do it and if it's upheld and I realize that okay we're not that's not something to win or like that patient insurance company does not offer external appeal or second level and I it's upheld I have to close the account I will a certain account I will have to close it I write it off write off the amount so that patient will not have a, a, a bill or anything so but anything over 5,000 I tend to management and management will write it off I don't write off anything over 5,000 so that's another thing most, most uh, company has that 5,000 is a lot. This is the only company. Okay, 5,000 is a lot for like a hospital company. Or it's not a lot. That's the typical amount you'll be writing off if you work for a major company. Like a smaller company, it'll probably be 2,000, 3,000. So it just depends on that. Yeah, so we have monthly staff meeting that helps us as a team to see trends that see trends like now I have been getting a lot of condition code denial um, so uh, it's they requested me to add condition codes or certain things but they don't want me to send it electronically they want it on paper 
is a lot more time consuming because then I have to do a certified form, fill it out, put the tracking them on the account, have it written up and everything, print out the UB. It's just a lot. So I love having to do it the other way, but you have to do what they ask. So that's also a new thing and then with a lot of the insurance company that had um, denials on pause due to COVID, everything's picking back up now. So I'm getting a lot more denials because now, you know, the whole COVID situation is dying down. So now, those denials or those claims that were just paid, just like they were paying them because the patient came in, tested positive for COVID, or a patient came back, they're reviewing a lot of those cases and they're like, oh, this was medically necessary. Why did you test the patient? Da, da, da. So, you know, now everything's coming full circle. It's a new year. Contracts are being revised. So now we're learning, okay, we're not par with this insurance company right now. We're under negotiation with this company. So um, all of those things are new this month that we're going through. Um, Is that oh, is that one coworker that just nonstop? But anyways, like I'm saying, so they will have like now we're going through that phase. And another more important thing is a lot of new codes coming in for COVID, especially with the new variant. They're changing up their coding so they can spot those bills and just push them through. But it it's creating a lot of issues with our building because it was getting stuck in the system and it's not pushing the bill out so we have to sometimes manually push push the claim out so we're we're getting it we're getting we're getting hit we're getting hit with it but it like i said if this is a career path you're choosing it's always changing and these past two years have definitely showed me and renewed my my sense of enthuse for this job um i would definitely go with a company that's willing to invest in you keep learning like what i love about working with the hospital and it changes they have to implement them and teach us because obviously we don't know what they have to hire them to build it so we get a lot of in service or um continuing education um like courses we can do and they pick up the bill so if you are looking to get into that with billing every october you know new codes come out so I would advise to get a job where they're going to keep up with it, buy you your books, especially because those books are not cheap, baby, not cheap, they are not cheap, but when you work for like a hospital, you have to keep up with certain things, you have to know certain things, so guess what, they end where you need, so yes, it is paid for a certain time so I would say when you're looking into changing or if you're looking to get into this career you have been to school I would look into it and also I would do the AAPC membership I have the membership and I pay for it out of pocket then I send the receipt and everything in and I get my money back simple like um, it's very helpful because sometimes I might not know something especially when I'm working from home and I don't really know where to turn 
I can simply search the portal, that portal, and get a lot of help. Right now, I am sorting a mail that came in at the end of the day, and I want to scan them to my clothes that they will come in tomorrow while I work from home. So that's why um, that's why I am doing this mail so late. Um, I'm trying to get it a little ahead. Um, yesterday, Tuesday, having to leave so early, I kind of pushed myself back a little bit, so I need to bump up ahead, and then I have a lot of stuff I need to get done at home with Caitlin with um, his he has some school stuff that's coming up, school tests and stuff coming up that I need to kind of sit and do some one-on-one -on -one learning with him. So as for this portion of the video, I'm going to go ahead and break down the most annoying part of my job, doing follow-up calls or checking the status of any kind of claim, payment, anything like that. This day, I have one claim that I have been trying to get reprocessed for about a year and a half now. So this claim originally denied, then it was appealed, I appealed, got it overturned. Once I got the overturned portion of it, they never pre-processed the claim and send out the payment. So I have been waiting for them to reprocess. I keep calling every few months just so I can get a status on everything. And each time I call, it still says it's pending processing, pending processing. So for this day, I was on the phone literally for two hours trying to get a supervisor. With them, they constantly tell you there's no supervisor, there's no supervisor, which is a bold-faced lie. There has to be a supervisor they might not be in the same building or they might be working from home, but they have a direct link to a supervisor to send it to you, to them. So I was pretty much just going through the motions till I got the supervisor who was able to send the claim on to the right person. They were not sending it when they, when the regular staff, customer service was sending it for reprocessing they were sending it to the regular claims department they had to send it to a different department that needed to reprocess the claim so i'm still pending still waiting because i still haven't gotten the payment but that's an example of a extremely tiring call so if you plan to be a medical biller and going through this or you just don't like people per like talking to people and doing this portion of it. How I got over that or how I became more comfortable with that is put your mind to exactly what you need done and think of it as if at the end of the day the the patient is gonna have to pay for even though some of them we can't build the patient, but think of it as you're helping out the patient and it will put you in a better mindset to fight for the patient, right? If you are compassionate in that way. Or think of it as either you get it done now and you could just be over with that claim and be done, then it will be better. Like with this claim, with me going back and forth so often and doing everything, at this point, if seven days go past and I do not have this claim paid by Tuesday when I'm in the office next, I am going to have to send it to our um, public relations person. I don't remember if that's what they call, but I'm going to have to kick it up to that person because they've been dragging it out. So everyone has a person, a rep for every insurance company that we deal with. So I need to figure out who my rep is for that payer and send this claim to her or him and they will have to push it through and get it paid. So that's also another option if you realize you just can't get it done on your own. 
the next option is you can always let your management know you've been fighting and going back and forth. You're not getting anywhere and they can either kick it up the chain of command because obviously management meets with these insurance company. They have inside contacts that we don't have. I'm in a lot of those meetings, but I still don't have the same contacts that they have. So there's ways to get what you need. You just have to go ahead and find that way. So I just want to explain that portion to you. If you have any other comments or questions, please leave them down below because I am also going to show you guys. I am going to show you guys my work from home day and how I structure myself for maximum work capabilities while especially when you have kids at home with you it's kind of hard so i'm going to show you guys how i plan out my day how i work my schedule when i'm working from home and the things that i do do when i'm at home because there's certain things because of hipaa violation i cannot take home and i won't take home so guys as always this is the end of today's video but if you have any any questions or you're starting this job and you just want to know anything let me know i have no problem answering i actually love talking to you guys about this because i actually i'm living it i can answer your questions if i don't know personally i will ask management or if it's something to do with outpatient billing i can ask someone in outpatient staffing so let me know and i will definitely get back to you guys if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will catch you guys in the next one.